It all started when the Rev 7 met the Rev 1. The rest you could say is history. Pioneer did it again, people. I'd like to introduce to you the new DDJ Rev 5. So as you can see, the Rev 5 is the third controller from Pioneer that is in battle style mode. I'm super pumped about it. Now, first impressions, it's literally the same size as the Rev 7. Very, very similar, maybe just slightly smaller. I have it on top of my Rev 7 right now. I mean, we're talking maybe a half an inch on either side small. It's basically the same exact size. Literally no joke. Only weighs a lot less, 13.7 pounds. Let's go over all the details, people. So first impressions, I think it feels great. I think it looks great. Super familiar layout, being battle style and whatnot. Same size as the Rev 7, so it's big. You know what I mean? Like it's, it just, it doesn't look like a toy. You know, some controllers are super small. You know, Pioneer makes smaller controllers too, and they're good for practicing here and there. But if you're gonna bring something out, you know, if you like a bigger look, this is it. I mean, you have the seven inch of full jog wheels similar to the CDJ platters. You got the Magville fader in the middle, which is super, super cool, right? So like great for scratching. Like this controller is absolutely fantastic for scratching. And I mean, it's got all the features that you'd ever need and some extra ones. But let's just start with the basics. We'll start with ports, okay? You got your two XLRs, your two master RCAs, your two balanced booth quarter inches, right? Super standard, but this makes it where you can use this in any professional setting. Like you got the right outputs right here. Two USB-C outs, so it is a dual sound card, so easy for switching and whatnot with DJs, which is super clutch. And obviously we're in 2023 now, so we got USB-Cs all over the place. But not just to hook up your laptop, also a first to power it. This is actually USB-C powered. Now it does come with a power block, right? So it's like a regular power block like this, but theoretically you can use your Mac power or your Windows power. If it's USB-C, you know, like you could literally power it with that. So if you happen to forget your power cord, it's a lot easier to find a USB-C rather than like some special little, you know, whatever plug that they usually come with. Especially now that like Radio Shack's out of business, you know what I mean? Moving over here, you got an RCA aux, and then you have two dedicated mic inputs. Mic one is an XLR quarter inch combo jack with a built-in attenuator, very similar to the Rev 7. And then the mic two is a quarter inch jack with also a separate attenuator. So I'm a big fan of that. You have two dedicated mic inputs. The mic volumes are actually right in the front of this bad boy just like the Rev 7. So you got the two mic volumes over here, you got the on and the talk over feature, and then you have your high and low EQs. And then right to the right of that, you have the crossfader curves, you can adjust the curve right there, and you can set it to reverse if you're a hamster person. And then of course you have your headphone inputs, quarter inch and eighth inch, you got the level for that, you got the mix for your headphone, and then you have your aux controls as well here, so. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty familiar. Now on top, let's talk about the jog wheels first. They feel great. They actually press in a little bit. They're kind of like, uh, you know, kind of like CDJ platters, you know, like full size. They're seven inch platters, very big, plenty of room to work here. And you can also adjust the feel, you know, light or heavy. Uh, very similar to like, you know, what Pioneers had in their other controllers, so I love how they did that. Now above these beautiful jog wheels, you have a horizontal pitch fader slider. Love to see it, love to see it, similar to a turntable that's in battle mode, that's what they're kind of like mimicking. You got your USB selector, right? Your, uh, your computer, you can load tracks and select here. You got the key where you can uh, sync the key, key reset, or like jump up keys, so you can like jump keys with that. You have a full suite of buttons here for stems now, so vocal, melody, bass, and drums can easily be activated with that, which is really, really cool. And then your loop functions, your key lock. By the way, the tempo range button, nobody told me about this until I was playing with it. You could select 8%, 16%, 50%, or 100%. Like, what does that even sound like? Torridge, got a lot more shit than you can ever fathom. A big head couldn't even All that stuff's located right here, and a very new feature 
that we'll talk about called the auto BPM transition feature. We'll talk about it in a second. That's pretty wild. Now, if we move to the middle, it's like a little mini S7. Similar to the Rev 7, right? You got the eight pads on either side, full RGB color, everything, you know, super familiar buttons. It's the Pioneer layout. If you like Pioneer products, this thing is laid out the same way. And I just love this layout overall. If you're a DJ that's looking to learn how to scratch, this is a great controller for that because like it's really just made for that. You have real jog wheels, they feel great. And then like the Magville fader and all this space in real estate, I just, I don't know, I'm a fan of this layout. It's like my favorite layout for Pioneer for any controller ever. It's really cool that they kind of made this without the motorized platters, you know, make it a little more affordable for everybody else. You know what I mean? Now, as far as the knobs, you have dedicated beat jumps. You have obviously your highs, mids, lows, all your EQs, your gain, your low pass, high pass filters, and the effects section where you have a wet dry in the middle, and then you have two dedicated toggles, similar to S9, S7, S11, Rev7, right? What you're used to there. You have three effect selects on either side. Now, the one downfall here is it doesn't have onboard effects. It does just utilize the Serato or Rekordbox effects, whatever program you're using. But the cool thing is you can do combos, so you can do multiple effects on like one channel. You can also separate effects, so you can have like an echo effect going on channel two, while like a reverb effect is on channel one. So it does give you that flexibility and whatnot. And then like overall, as far as like the size of the pads here and the size of the effects toggles, they're slightly smaller than the Rev7. So same size controller, but it seems like like here it's just like a little smaller. Like the Q pads here are very similar to the S9. Like if you used the S9 and then went to an S7 or an S11 or a Rev7, it's like it, the pads got wider, they got bigger. You know what I mean? These are similar to kind of like the S9 pads. So just keep that in mind. So let's talk about auto BPM transition. So this allows you to transition, make huge BPM jumps, essentially make your own transition tracks, like live with any two songs you want. And it works pretty well. Pretty cool, you know, if you use transition tracks a lot as a DJ, I think you'd love this because it gives you more versatility. You don't have to use the same ones over and over again. You can come up with your own and stuff like that. It basically evolves sync and then it syncs the two songs and it automatically transitions up for you. And you have your dedicated buttons here. So essentially what you wanna do is you have one track here. I'm gonna have Hip Hop Array on this side. It's gonna be 99 BPMs. And then I'm gonna have Hotel Room Service on this side. And this is gonna be like 128 or whatever it is, like 126. Now, I don't want words over words. So I'm actually gonna take out the vocal stem on this, right? And it does work with stems. So it applies like, it only plays like what you have selected as far as stems and stuff, which is cool. And basically I'm gonna start with Hip Hop Array. So we'll have this going. Hit this button and this at the same time, ready? It's gonna sync. And then it automatically transitioned up. That's basically how it works. I mean, <laughs> so it's pretty turnkey. You essentially like, the track you want to speed up BPM, you have to hit this dedicated play button here on that track, the auto BPM transition play button. You still have to like line it up, you know, but um, it, it works pretty seamlessly and it even utilizes the stem feature. So not only obviously like if you have vocal turned off then vocals off and you don't have to worry about that, you have your instrumental on this side, but also you can use the select button and you can select which stems you want to be selected, you want on during the transition, and then it'll do that for you automatically. So essentially, if you want the vocals to drop out, you just use select here and then turn off the vocals, turn everything on but the vocals. And then when you do the transition, you know, when you start it, when you hit the play button, it's gonna drop the vocals automatically out for you and then do the transition totally. So pretty cool, pretty automated. Now another cool stems feature they have on here besides the dedicated buttons here is number one, you have stem solo. So if you double tap stem solo here, now when you select the stems, it's gonna solo it out. So it's just gonna be bass, drums, melody, or whatever. So you don't have to like basically select three at once, which is pretty cool, right? So it makes it easier to apply stems. And you also have stem EQ, where essentially you can assign the stems to the EQs. And that's real easy. All you do is press shift 
and then you click on your channel one or channel two, your uh, headphone cue things, and then it assigns the stems to the cues. I think that's such a cool feature. I, I wish I could have that on every mixer at like, you know, in certain points, cause like it, it, basically you have your vocals on the high, you have your bass and melody on the mid, and then you have your drums on the low. So just another way to utilize the amazing technology of stems. And by the way, if you're not using stems, DJs, it changed my life and it'll change yours too. Just trust me on this, okay? It's worth it. It's worth every penny it may cost you. Just, just, just make it a goal to have stems in your life. You will be a better DJ overnight. Trust me. So overall, guys, I love this controller. I think it's great. I think it's perfect for scratching. Like you have fantastic faders, great platters. You're very adjustable and whatnot. I love the pads. I love the stem layouts. I love how you could do the stem EQs. The auto BPM transition's pretty cool. Honestly, this is basically a Rev 7, except for you don't have the motorized platters, so if you're not into that, you just have the CDJ platters, which do feel amazing, so it's way, way lighter. The pads, like the Q pads here, are a little smaller, similar to like an S9. The effects dongles are a little smaller, and you don't have onboard effects, so you know, you're using Serato effects. But beyond that, you know, it's very, very similar to the Rev 7, and get this, okay? Are you ready? Are you ready? This is coming out late September for $10.99. So, you know, if you're a DJ that's looking to try and learn how to scratch, you know, you, you can't afford a Rev 7 or you're not trying to carry something that heavy or whatever, like this is such an amazing option. And it's battle style. So if you wanted to DJ in battle style, either you spend a bunch of money on CDJs in a battle mixer or turntables in a battle mixer, or you get the Rev 7, which is a good amount of money, fantastic controller, the best, but a lot of money, right? Or the Rev 1, which is like not professional. Like Rev 1's cool, but you can't use it in professional environments, right? This answers that. This is right in between. The Rev 5, literally, I, I, it's gonna make a lot of you happy, 100%. I love this thing. I put my stamp of approval on it, and um, yeah. Let me know if you're getting it in the comments, people. Let me know. But as always, thank you for watching, people, and I'll see you at the next one.